Hello, my name is Michael Clark. Thank you for watching my presentation on Stash Bamboo at Bring It. Stash is a Git source control management system. It contains a repository for all product assets required to build a product. It allows also individual users to have personal repos as well, so you can do all your work from within Stash. A Stash repo may be cloned to your local machine. You go to the URL, drill to it, and then click the Clone button. It will give you the URL required. Then in a tool such as SourceTree from Atlassian, you may click Clone and then enter the URL. This will make a local copy on your machine of that repo. Once you have cloned a repo, you may work on any branch inside that repo or you may click Branch and create your own branch. Using an existing branch is called checking out that branch and you may do that by right clicking and choosing checkout. The checkbox indicates that you've checked out this branch. Any branch you check out is the branch you're going to be editing when you navigate to that repo on your local machine. I've made a change to the readme and you can see that it shows this change here and it shows working copy changes to that file. Once you're done making changes with a file, drag and drop the working copy to stage changes. This will allow you to commit. Commits are local first. As you've seen here, I've dragged the file from my working copy changes to the staged changes. That gives me the option to commit. I did that by pressing commit here. It brings up this dialog. Now make sure to be very detailed and if you want it to be a one-stop process, click push commits immediately too. And this will mean when you click commit it actually pushes it upstream. Else it's local first. And after you commit locally, you'll see that next to your branch there's a number saying you have one file change pending that needs to be pushed. As commits are cumulative, it's very important to keep very good detail in your commit messages. It's also very important to keep the JIRA ticket number in your messages as Stash pulls out those JIRA ticket numbers and makes everything contiguous. It's super important you include your JIRA ticket number so everything stays together. Once you have made changes to your local branch, you need to click push and push your local branch out. Your local branch will then take those changes and push them out to the remote server. Once you've clicked OK and it has pushed, you'll see your branch. If you go to Stash and click the branch drop-down, you should see your branch. If your branch is finished, that is everyone is done working on it, then it's time to merge that branch upstream. We do that with something called a pull request. The button for it is right next to clone and fork, pull request. A pull request is the parent pulling the data from the child. You upload a branch and you want to push that branch into master, you need master to say, hey, I'm going to pull your new branch into myself. This also is the place that we add human validation. Here we add reviewers and create a very detailed description including your JIRA ticket number. Once we've done that, we click create. Then that pull request is queued and waiting for reviewers. Once it's reviewed, then we can click merge. So pull request security is modified from repo to repo. If your repo contains a required approvers configuration and settings, then your pull request will require you to fill in that reviewers uh, box and each one of those reviewers will need to click approve before this merge button is going to be lit. Now this merge button is lit because I have more than one reviewer who has clicked approve and therefore I could click this merge button and allow this pull request to go. Note that this pull request does include a list of change files which you can diff so you can see what's being asked to be pulled in this merge request. Also note the big spaces here that's because you can comment on every single line before you click approve or decline. 
Before we go much further, I wanted to speak a little bit about the names proposed for the branching system. Master, of course, is the final production release. Staging would be the next to the last stop before we actually push Master. So staging is like a test branch before we actually go to final production. Now each branch name I've written out this way with BlueJ, that's the name of your JIRA project. This could change project to project. The JIRA ticket number and here we're including Sprint and the Sprint number. This is a proposed method, not necessarily how we have to do it, but we're going to try and be consistent as we move forward. This would be the current Sprint branch. This is where most of your work would be checked into. You would also check out this branch and work on this branch over the Sprint and at the end of this sprint, uh, a final pull request uh, from this sprint into probably staging would be done by the Scrum Master, and then that sprint would then be pushed forward for testing. Now, there are a couple of special names that are built in. For example, if I'm working on a branch, if I then make a branch of my branch and put the word build in front of it, this causes Bamboo to automate automatically create a special build for that branch so you can preview it using a build agent directly on the Bamboo system. So we'll talk about this more later, but naming's really important. Remember, master is our final destination, but you may be checking into other destinations rather than master. In these first phases, you'll probably be working with our initial repo structure. We've created a BWOC www root, which is exactly the same as the root of the web server itself. All release pieces should reside as a part of this repo. Within our repo, we have subfolders. Under BWOC www root, we have BWOC flash client and static, BWOC is where the Python files reside. Flash client contains several other subfolders. The root contains the executable Flash client and HTML and JavaScript to serve it. Assets contain the uncompiled art files and source contains AS3 and compiled art files. This folder is deleted before deployment. Other things like the Django admin CSS files, they're all contained in this static folder. Let's go over what our standard sprint process would look like. The Scrum Master would create a JIRA epic or whatever kind of thing for that sprint. The JIRA then creates the ticket and assigns it a number like BlueJ1970 or something like that. One person, once again, probably the Scrum Master, is going to clone a branch of staging. Now we can discuss which branch we're going to clone for that, but likely to be staging. Now we're going to call that new branch BlueJ, whatever the ticket number is, and whatever the sprint number is. Here you can see BlueJ1970, that's my JIRA ticket number. I then click Create. Once I've created this local branch, I then push it out and everyone can use it together. Now you'll see that that remote branch is now available via remote for checkout. Once we have a sprint branch to work with, you'll make a branch of that branch. Here you see we're branching our current branch into a new branch. Note that our new branch contains the ticket number that we're working on and a very, very good description of what that is. It's important to note that we want to maintain these JIRA ticket numbers in our descriptions and in our commit messages so everything stays well connected. You don't have to do this. You can name anything you, any way you'd like, but doing this causes everything to be linked together, drillable, and it makes everyone able to collaborate more easily. So now we have a sprint branch and you've created a branch of that sprint branch and likely it's not just you working on that branch, it's probably you and a colleague working together on a particular feature. So if that's true, you both need to sync together because you're working in a synchronous work environment. Everyone else's progress needs to be in your branch as well as your progress. So we do that through pulling. Now, if you do a pull, it's going to merge 
other people's work into the work that you're doing. So you're all on the same page. Now this does mean that it is possible for conflicts to arise. And most of the time the AI can figure out how to merge those things together. Occasionally merge conflicts do occur. I'm not going to go through how to go through line by line comparison and all of that. It's kind of outside the scope of this discussion. In Source Tree you click right click resolve. In uh, Eclipse, you do pretty close to the same thing. Just recognize that you're going to need to do pull requests uh, often to s keep fresh and up to date with your colleagues. That's about it. You're now ready for local development. You can view and, lo and develop locally, make sure everything works locally, and when you're ready, you push your branch. Once that branch is ready to merge into the current sprint, you create a pull request, possibly select some reviewers, and merge that into the current sprint. Now that we've tested and developed locally, we would want to get that out onto internet viewable servers and see what it's going to look like in production. We use the continuous integration system for that. Uh, currently we have a very small system. Ideally we would need some more boxes. Currently we have three servers. Ideally it'd be probably closer to 10 and it may be possible to improve some of the routing inside the application so we'd need less than that but that would be ideal. Currently we have Stash which is our repo, Bamboo which builds from our repo, and Agent which theory in theory is supposed to be a builder for Bamboo but at the moment it's our only deployment location. So Currently, if you want to look at our application through Facebook, you would use our agent to see it. Now, ideally, we would have Stash and Bamboo, but we would have multiple agents, probably five or so, and these may be deployed through uh, Amazon Elastic Services so they could spin up and spin down as we need them using that build trigger inside Bamboo or through automated build processes, and then Ultimately, instead of just the one deployment location, we would have multiple dev staging for testing and prod, which is our actual production system. Currently, when the master branch is updated, that triggers a build. A build equals a package for release. Everything is put together in one location and prepared to be pushed to a production server. Start also, it not just master, but if you start any branch with the word build, this also causes Bamboo to trigger a build. This is the Bamboo server, and as you can see the plan, we called it build, but uh, it's been built properly. That's why there's a green checkbox here, because we got a good build. Now, what exactly does a build do? Well, this is a direct picture of our Bamboo build process for master. As you can see here, it fetches the BWOC www root repo that we showed you earlier, then it runs a bunch of scripts across that, then very shortly it's going to also run tests and make sure that that build is actually functioning within expected parameters. This particular build we've already deployed, which I will go over now. So I built again so you could see the process, and we got a green build, number 87, and as you can see, we, because we got a good green build, we can now create a release. That release we could then deploy, and we'll go over more of that. So once we have a good build, we then click Create Release, and this is that release form. Uh, we're trying to create a, lease, a release for deployment. We give it a version. Those version numbers are automatically generated, but uh, as you can see, we can manually input them. You can select which build to choose for making that deployment. And once you do this, you click Create Release. It creates the version number, and we can then deploy. Currently, with our limited servers, we only have one location to deploy to. That's Agent 01. Here it's called Build. To deploy, we select Deploy, and then we select the release we're going to deploy, this we just created, and we click Start Deployment. It's really quite simple. 
on that deployment it does several things it cleans our working directory it then downloads the artifacts that's our build what we built is being downloaded then it stops the web server it nukes the existing repo it copies that new artifact over here's our new bwok www root it gets copied over then we run a syncdb and migrate which is django bringing our database up to speed and then we restart our web server uh, last time it took about 49 seconds, so that's how long it thinks it's going to take to do it this time. And these are the agents that it can use. At the moment we only have one, as I mentioned earlier, but ideally we'd have five or more uh, elastic images, and then this would just launch whatever it needed to in order to cause that into existence. Now that we've deployed, you can actually view it uh, through the endpoint. In this particular case, we're looking to view it through Facebook, Agent 01 is called Bring It Agent 1 through Facebook. So as you can see, our, our agent that we just deployed to is serving properly. A few extra neat features I wanted to make sure you were aware of. Uh, the most important is the addition of this Edit button in Stash. As you can see, we're in Stash, and I've navigated to one file. I then clicked Edit on that file, and it brings up a WYSIWYG editor directly in Stash, so you don't have to go through Eclipse or anything else. If you're on the road, you need to make a quick edit. Make it here, then click this Publish, and don't forget to put your Jira ticket in here. Click a commit message, click Commit, and it'll kick you into a pull request dialog and you can get your change merged in right away. This is a fantastic feature. It also includes Collaborate. So if you're working with another engineer and you both are in two different places and you want to see what you're working on at the same time, if you click Collaborate, you can both look at the same document at the same time. And finally, I kept telling you to use JIRA integration. So I wanted to show you in JIRA itself what that would look like. If you enter a JIRA ticket number in the commit message, it will show up inside your JIRA ticket. And this is exactly what that looks like. If you click the source tab on any JIRA ticket that's been mentioned in a commit, you'll see it here. All of this is drillable, so you can go directly from JIRA to Stash and see exactly what changes were committed, when, by who, in what order, and even what sprint, and all the information you'd need. It also allows us to go back. If we find that a particular place is bad, we can then take that particular commit out and continue to go on. It makes it very, very simple for us to find where changes have been made and really, really uh, have a better understanding of what is going in and out of the application. This ends our presentation. Thank you very much for watching this very brief introduction to how the Bring It Continuous Integration System works.